Hi there, I'm Chris Davis from Mad Water and Stir, and just want to show you something kind of exciting that's uh, literally been almost four years in the making, and that is finally getting to the point where we can add an ESP01S module to the Altair Duino to enable connecting with Telnet over Wi Fi. Uh, I want to say thanks to uh, David Hansel, who not only wrote the uh, the Altair Duino software that emulates the Altair. He uh, also wrote the the software, most of the software that is used in the ESP01S here. Uh, happened to find it on his GitHub repository. I think it's been there a couple years, but I was able to make some some modifications to it so that it works uh, with the Altair Duino. So uh, here is the module. Um, let me zoom in on that for you. Um, basically this right here is the module. It's very small. Um, this is the uh, ESP01S. It has a uh, one meg of memory. So I would say if you're going to do this, get the 01S. Don't get just the regular 01 because that only had 512k of memory. I don't know if that's enough to actually hold the software for this. Uh, this right here, this is a programmer for the device. There are a few different styles out there. Uh, this one is uh, it's called the Open Smart USB adapter for ESP01S. I would say if you can try to get this one, uh, it's got a switch on there that allows you to switch between UART and program. The uh, original one, you actually had to solder your own jumper on there to allow it to program. Uh, there's also a third type out there with a button on it. Um, I have not tried that one, so. Uh, you know, give any one of them a try, but the one I use is called the Open Smart USB adapter. So give that a try. Um, basically, you, you plug the ESP01S into it, and you stick it in your computer, and you uh, upload software with the Arduino IDE. You just need to make sure you install the ESP8266 board uh, and a few extensions. I'll I'll write that up and I'll uh, I'll put that on my website uh, as soon as I can. But I just wanted to show you how this works here. So what we're going to do is I have already programmed this device using the Arduino IDE. Um, if you grab David's code from his repository, that works a little different and maybe is not the most intuitive to work with the Altair Duino. So I would say uh, I will uh, make sure I have a link uh, when I get this posted on my website so that you can download that because I've added a uh, Wi-Fi manager to it that lets you do the setup through Wi-Fi, which is uh, David's required this to be installed uh, basically to connect to it through a serial interface to set up the Wi-Fi, and then you'd remove it and attach it to your Altair Duino. So hopefully uh, mine is a little bit easier to use with the Altair Duino. So it basically, uh, I've added some headers here uh, because, well, if you solder it to the board, then you're stuck. I mean, you can't remove it and reprogram it if any changes come up. And uh, that is, it's not too high of a profile. It still fits under the front panel, so it's just perfect just that way. So uh, this is a newly programmed ESP01S, so let's plug it in and, and hope for the best. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you don't have to have it plugged into a laptop to get it going, but for the first time, I'm going to have to do this. Um, so let me plug this into my laptop. All right. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, first you'll see uh, it's, it's operating, there's a blue light down here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to connect to Wi-Fi and find it. It's going to show up in Wi-Fi as a network. Can you read that? It says Altair Duino right on there under My Networks. Well, that's the, the ESP01S. So. I'm going to click Altair Duino. Now this should open a captive gateway, uh, a web page that uh, will allow you to configure Wi-Fi. If this doesn't open, can you read that IP address up there? What you need to do is go to a browser and go to 192.168.4.1 and then you should get into this gateway here. So we're going to hit uh, configure Wi- well there's some 
you can look at the information, you can mess with the stuff if you want, uh, but we're going to click configure Wi-Fi. Whoops, I didn't want Netgear. Uh, anyway, you're going to see, uh, well, I tell you what, my SSID is not showing up yet. I'm getting uh, some of the neighbors, so I'm going to hit refresh. Hopefully it's got mine. Yeah, there it is. It should be the strongest. I mean, your, your home Wi-Fi should be the strongest signal. So there it is. No free Wi-Fi for you. That's uh, what I'm telling my neighbors. <laughs> uh, and then it wants me to enter the password. So uh, I'm going to enter my super secret password. Okay. And then we're going to save it. And it is saving the credentials. Uh, trying to connect the ESP to the network. Um, basically just give this, I don't know, well, I guess it'll close the captive gateway when it's successful, I guess. Uh, so now, the ESP01 is connected to my Wi-Fi. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, here's, here's why I needed to have it connected to a laptop. Uh, because even though it's connected to Wi-Fi, there, there's no way to tell the Altair Duino right now use that serial port. Um, oh, I should have mentioned, this is a this is a, a, an Altair Duino standard. There's no Bluetooth adapter, meaning that the first serial port is available. Uh, the second serial port is being used by the DB9 connector here. Uh, so, this will not work on, on an Altair Duino Pro, at least not right now. Um, I will make another video and show you how to connect this to the Altair Duino Pro, which is actually going to be a little bit more work because that first serial port is being used by your VT100 emulator. So uh, let's just continue with the Altair Duino standard right now. So if you did have a Bluetooth adapter, you're going to have to remove that uh, because we're going to use the serial port. Or you can watch the next video and maybe adapt my method for attaching this uh, to the Altair Duino standard. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to fire up a couple instances, here let me clear that out, couple instances of putty. So here we go, and we're going to uh, first connect via serial port to, uh, let's see what I'm going to do, 115200 for the uh, speed to uh com six one one five two zero zero all right here we go uh i'm going to increase the the um font size so that you can see this easier where are my settings change settings window appearance font Let's crank it up to 20. All right. Um, and now I'm going to go to uh, my settings, raise uh, the stop switch, and raise auxiliary one. <clears throat> so what I need to do is change my host serial from the programming port here. But you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to open up another session to my Wi-Fi adapter. Now... This gets a little tricky. Um, if your network is set up right and everything's working, you should be able to go to Arduino, no, excuse me, Altair.local. Uh, but if I try to go to Altair, uh, Altair.local, um, oh, I want to click this over to Telnet in Putty, Altair.local, it's going to tell me it can't connect, I think. Yep, it's not going to... I've had that problem with my network. I, <clears throat> I've even tried it on a Mac, and I don't know what's wrong with my network, but the dot .local doesn't work. So, what we need to do is we need to determine the IP address of our Wi-Fi connection. So, I have this handy utility called Advanced IP Scanner. It's free. I would suggest you download it. I use this thing all the time. Uh, I scanned my network before I hooked this up, so it's not there. Uh, so there's, uh, what do we have, 42 connections. So when I scan, there should be 43 connections because there should be one more connection. All right. 
So, uh, actually, <laughs> this should have shown the manufacturer, which would be Expressif Inc., uh, the company that makes the ESP-01S. Uh, but I do know, just from prior use, it is 192.168.1.132, because that's... It will not always get that number from DHCP, but unless you've done a lot of changes on your network, it probably will grab the same number each time. Um, kind of the only reason I know it's there is because it wasn't there before, so that might be the way you need to identify the IP address. You can also see if you use advanced IP scanner, there's a little uh, uh, carrot here beside that. That means there's a service available, and it is actually an HTTP service. Uh, if we click to that, it'll open up a browser, and it's just got some uh, settings, and, you know, I would say really don't mess around with that unless maybe you want to change the baud rate. The default is to set to 9600 baud. So uh, I'm just going to close that. So there we go. We have our IP address, 192.168.1.132. So I'm going to, I already have a, a PuTTY configuration open here, and I'm going to connect to that through Telnet. 192.168.1.132 uh, port 23 and we are ready to go open size so what we need to do uh, is we need to change the primary host serial on the Altair Duino so I'm going to hit capital P and it's just going to cycle through the host serial so we want to go to serial pin 1819 or otherwise what I call serial port 1 uh, and we're going to apply it. Now as soon as I hit apply, it's going to be asking, it's going to, it's waiting 30 seconds for me to confirm it over on the Wi-Fi interface. So I'm going to say yes. There we go. Now we are connected through Wi-Fi. Now what if you don't want to go through this every time? That's honestly, this is a, a real hassle. So I'm going to save this configuration. Um, the default, if you've downloaded the configurations from my website or if you still have the SD card, from when you first purchased your Altair Duino kit. The, um, normally serial port number one is, you know, in saved as configuration one. Serial port two, or on this one, the uh, DB9 connection is saved as configuration number two. Um, this one should work with con con um, serial port one, already configured. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save it as serial as configuration number three, just in case. Oh, by the way, you see it says SS and 33. Um, that's because local echo is enabled by default in Telnet on PuTTY. We actually uh, we want to turn that off. So I'm going to go to settings. Change settings. Uh, let's see, what is that in here? Um, it's not under Telnet or connection settings. It's I think it's if I just click terminal here. Uh, yeah, local echo is auto. I'm gonna force it off. Apply. So now I can I can exit, and we've saved that as configuration number three. But also, like I say, it's probably configuration number number one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and detach from the computer, shut off the Altair Duino, and I'm going to connect a power supply to it. So here we've got 9 volt power supply. I'm going to plug that into the back. And um, hold up switch 3, or actually, I'm sorry, I want configuration number 3, we're dealing with binary. So I turn up switch 1 and switch 2. Uh, and then I hold up deposit while I'm turning it on. And that's going to that's gonna make it load configuration number 3 from the SD card on power up. So there we go. So configuration number 3 should be loaded. So uh, let's go back to my putty window. Switch 12 up, uh, aux 2 down. Now, is it going to work? Uh, are we going to see a listing of the... Yes! There we go. All right.
I'm connected to Telnet through Wi-Fi to my Altair Duino. There's uh, no connection between this and the computer. This could be sitting across the room, although it'd be kind of hard to reach the switches then. Uh, <laughs> so let's uh, go ahead and load up some Zork. Is it loading? Or maybe I didn't. DIR, Zork 1. And there we go. There's a small mailbox there. Uh, why don't we go ahead and open that mailbox? What's in there? Oh my goodness, there's a leaflet. We're going to get it and we're going to read it and then we're done. So there we go. Uh, we're connected by Wi Fi to the Altair Duino. Uh, I'll write up some instructions about this, um, get you some information that you need. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, thanks for watching.